spotlights. I don't know. This is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. It's a movie about two, two blue wounds. Two people who have fallen in love before, fallen in hate before, despite the hate, fall in love again, fall in hate again, love, hate, love, hate, again, and again, and again. Two blue ruins crumbling eternally. I need your love. This is Mad Love, the 11th episode of the new Batman adventures in which two fall in love, fall in hate, and despite the hate, fall in love again, fall in hate again, love, hate, love, hate again and again. Welcome to Film Switch, where we take a movie we love, put it in conversation with something unlikely, and see what we learn. Today's theme... Mad love. Our teachers, Michelle Gondry's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and the aptly named Paul Dini Bruce Tim classic, Mad Love. Before going rogue, Harleen Quinzel was a psychiatrist ready to take the world by storm. You can't deny there's an element of glamour to these super criminals. Once Harley Quinn, she easily broke the Joker out of Arkham and even found herself inches from killing the Batman. Sweet dreams, sucker. In other words, she was just as skilled at crime as she was at science. Question is, how does someone so talented fall for and remain enamored with an abusive asshole like the Joker? An answer is given here. As a dedicated, career-oriented young woman, you felt the need to abstain from all amusement and fun. It's only natural you'd be attracted to a man who could make you laugh again. Harley's words. I knew you'd understand. And the way she smiles as he gives his diagnosis shows she agrees. Like most, Harley had to give up a certain amount of fun for her career. The Joker, with his little bit of slapstick, promised an escape from the mundane. <laughs> Inspired by his free-spiritedness, desperate for more laughs, she dropped her job and did something impulsive. Knock, knock, Puddin'. Say hello to your new, improved Harley Quinn. Joel Barish did the same. He is Eternal Sunshine's Harley Quinn. Although not as impressive as being a psychiatrist at Arkham, Joel had his own apartment, car, job. He had found moderate success in the civilian world. But success in that world means routine. It leaves one writing super emo crap about Sam. It's overrated. It's coarse, and rough, and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Like Harley, emo Joel was bound to fall for someone, anyone that can make him smile again. Wish me a happy Valentine's Day when you call. That'd be nice. Clementine is that person. She's Joel's Joker. Not in the abusive sense, but in the escape from the mundane sense. Like the Joker, she's forward. He initiates the relationship by leaving the flower a note. She initiates the relationship by saying hi. He is willing to be silly and drop his pants for a joke. She is willing to be silly and say stuff like this. Drink up, young man. I'll make the whole seduction part less repugnant. All these eccentricities left Joel and Harley thinking they'd be saved from monotony. But they were wrong, and they were warned. Joel saw Clementine as a concept. The truly seductive quality of Clementine is that her personality promises to take you out of the mundane. Even though she said herself, Too many guys think I'm a concept, or I complete them, or I'm gonna make them alive. But I'm just a fucked up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind. Don't assign me yours. But Joel didn't listen. I still thought you were gonna save my life. He saw all the signs that said this person is human. I'm a vindictive little bitch, truth be told. And sped right by them. I, I wouldn't think that about you. Similarly, Harley saw the Joker's track record. I studied all his tricks and gimmicks. Heard Batman say he doesn't love anybody. The Joker doesn't love anything except himself. And still said, You're wrong! My foot does love me, does! They held on to this belief that their counterparts were uncomplicated fun, but... <laughs> As with any relationship, it's all falling apart. the rose-colored glasses crack. Joel and Harley realized their partners weren't cures to routine, just the start of new ones. Chinese food for Joel. Dinner at Kang's again. 
predictable villain schemes for Harley. Instead of the uncomplicated fun they were hoping for, Joel and Harley received troubled human beings. The disappointment, by the way, is not one-sided. Clementine expected a nice Joel. I really like that you're nice. That'd be nice. But he makes comments like these. You really think you could take care of a kid? And she's left upset. What? Joker expected a submissive Harley, but she proves herself to be more talented than him and he flips. If you have to explain a joke, that is no joke! Expectations left unmet. Get out of my face, faggot! Everyone reaches a boiling point. And don't call me Puddin. Everyone, in some way, shape, or form, tries to erase the other. I finally see that slime for what he is. A murderous, manipulative, irredeemable. But they can't. Angel. Perhaps they'd be better off split apart, but the Joker returning to Harley, Harley returning to the Joker, the jump cuts of Clementine and Joel repeating a run on the beach, these endings suggest the high couples give each other are what the lows they inflict. This is not to say mad love promotes falling for an abusive person because they make you laugh. It just shows an extreme example of what happens between Joel and Clem and relationships in general. We want someone to fit the ideal we have in our head and for a moment they do. For a moment they are magic, but that moment passes. The magic turns human and we end up hurt. But not hurt enough to stop trying. But not hurt enough to stop trying. But not hurt enough to stop trying. But not hurt enough to stop. Together, our teachers say relationships become bouts of bliss and pain. The type of pain varying anywhere from mutual disgust to disgusting violence. If our teachers are right, if all love becomes people in pain, crossing their fingers for another hit of bliss, it seems the best one can do is stay away from the violent and find someone worth falling in love, hate, love, hate, love, someone worth enduring the cycle of madness with, because once it's spinning... It's difficult to stop. Thank you for watching this unlikely swap. If you enjoyed this one, you should check out our other ones. We did two about Courage the Cowardly Dog, one of them comparing it with Viva Vendetta and the other one comparing it with The Witch. If you like this video, help us grow, share it, like, comment, subscribe. And um, we touched on some darker subjects in this video, particularly with Mad Love, and we don't want to take any of that lightly. So if you are going through or experiencing any sort of domestic abuse, we included a hotline in the description. Please use that if you need to.